to welcome you here this morning for our Palm Sunday worship. We wish we could be together, of course, but here we are, and we will give God praise and to tell the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem at the beginning of this Holy Week. And so as we begin, we're going to sing Hosanna. Please sing with us. you've been able to place some greenery on your door, 
I invite you to go ahead and uh, put a picture of that in the comments. We do this to symbolize our Palm Sunday celebration that even while we're behind the doors of each of our homes, we welcome the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear these greens in his name, may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. I invite you to go ahead and share some words of peace with those who are in your home or those who are joining, uh, joining the video here today of our worship service. I invite you to share those words of peace while we sing, Your Grace is Enough.
morning and welcome again. I just have a few announcements to share with you as we uh, continue our worship service this morning as we enter Holy Week together. Uh, I'm sorry to say that because of the changing rules um, in order to keep one another safe, we had hoped that we would have palm branches to lay out um, and that people could pick up as they went uh, for their groceries that they might swing by here, but they have specifically said that that is not a sanitary way um, in order to worship right now, and so we are not doing that, um, which is hard. It's hard to let go of these things that are so, um, so meaningful to us, and yet we have to keep one another safe. It's also meant that we've had to pare down our worship. Um, we can't have the same numbers of people gathered. Um, in fact, it was a really hard decision to gather for worship in this way at all. The only reason that we are here uh, for this worship service in this way, here in the sanctuary, is because we tried it over Zoom, <laughs> and it just did not work. Uriah can attest to that. It did not work. Um, it was just very glitchy, and, and we want to make sure that we can provide some hope and meaning um, in the midst of this really difficult time to you all. And so we are gathering just the three of us. Um, Pastor Freeze, um, I'm grateful, has stayed home, though I think you should have seen a message from him um, before this service. And so we're doing what we can to continue uh, to tell the good news that God is love in word and in deed. And so we'll continue to worship this week, and again, it might look a little different than it normally does. Um, our Thursday evening worship will be at 7 p.m. Of course, we'll all be worshiping in our homes. And so um, I will invite you specifically on Thursday to, um, if you can, if, you're, if your schedule allows for it, to gather for dinner at 6 p.m and to make that a sacred meal that would be reflective of that last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. Um, and that if you are living alone, um, I would suggest following the suggestion of one of our living alone members that you would gather together the pictures uh, that you have in your home of those who are most important to you, those who are living but far away or you can't see right now, or those who have died and are with the saints at rest, um, to gather them and to, to have your meal with them, that sacred meal um, that begins our Monday Thursday. And then hopefully you would uh, finish your meal about 7 o'clock when the worship service begins. And then during the worship service you will be invited um, to participate in multiple ways. You'll be invited to, at one point to go and wash your hands, or if you live with others, to wash one another's hands. Um, reflecting that sacred act that Jesus does in washing the disciples' feet. You'll be invited at some point to, uh, to share a drink, um, to whatever drink, not wine, it won't be the blood of Christ as it is in communion, but, but a drink that would symbolize um, what it means to gather and to share one cup, um, which is a cup of suffering and of pain, but also one of hope for what is to come. And then you will finally be invited um, to, to strip down your own altar, as it were. So usually on a Monday, Thursday, we would strip the altar here. Uh, we would uh, take away all of the pyramids and we would wash everything down. We will invite you to do the same thing in your home. And so to put away all the religious symbols, any Easter decorations that you have out um, before you put them back out on Saturday night before uh, our Easter morning celebrations. And so we invite you to participate in all those ways and then to join us again on Friday night as our worship of the final three days of Lent continues with Good Friday. Good Friday, again, we will try Zoom, but only by voices. Only voices will come across on Zoom. The music is what is particularly difficult. And so we'll hear from multiple voices as we read through uh, the passion narrative together and as we um, extinguish candles representing the, the growing um, darkness and uncertainty of those hours, uh, but that the light never quite goes entirely away, that hope uh, in the resurrection continues. And then of course on, on Easter morning we will have worship at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. We invite you to join us uh, on Facebook um, so that you might be a part of our worship together. We also are continuing to run our food pantry, that though, um, though the building is technically closed, 
our ministry continues, and one of those ways that we are ministering is the food pantry on Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Is that if that is helpful to you, um, you are welcome to take advantage of that. If you would like to help with that in any way, um, you may certainly be in touch. We are also providing additional support these days to families from Glenmount Elementary Middle and uh, City Neighbors Charter School, and that's extended, in fact, to City Neighbors High School. So um, if you would like to help in any way, just let us know. Well, as we continue our, with our worship service, let's take a moment for prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for gathering us, for making us your own, for giving us this space and this time to worship in all the uncertainty that pervades our lives these days. We pray that this time that we're able to spend in worship might give us hope and might give us the strength to, to be the body of Christ in this world, that this worship service might enliven us to your purpose for us in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. And at this time, I would specifically like to welcome any of the, um, any of the kids who are watching. Um, and if maybe you have ushered out the kids because you didn't think they would find it interesting, I would encourage you to bring them back um, because I want to have a little children's time. Um, so usually on Palm Sunday, we would make these crosses. I would instruct all the kids who are here to um, take their palm branch and to fold it up into a cross. It's... Um, Quite an exciting little task. It becomes quite messy, but after some practice, you can get it down. But this year, we don't have the palm branches. At least we can't distribute them. And so I invite you instead, after the worship service is over, to go outside. So just right outside your house and to find um, daffodils maybe that are blooming or, um, or pieces of the bush that grows outside your house and to take pieces of that and bring it in and form a cross from whatever you can find out in nature, that you'd be reminded that as uh, spring breaks in upon us and as we go through our Holy Week, that the cross is central to the Holy Week story. And not only that, it's central to our lives as Christians, that we would remain focused on the life given by Jesus on the cross and the cross that is finally found to be empty on Easter morning when we gather back here in one week. I invite you to pray with me. Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this day of celebration and of joy, even while we are sad and a little lost, we ask that you would come and that we would see your cross as a sign of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, at this time, we're going to continue our worship as we sing, Here I Am to Worship.
Our reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them. And he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Well, I should tell you that um, I, I mean, we hear this, this story every year. Um, We hear it from three different Gospels uh, as we rotate through, and I'm always struck, no matter which version it is, um, how much we uh, take the place of the crowd. You know, we gather, especially normally, we would gather on a Palm Sunday morning and we would begin outside, either out on the road, on Bel Air Road, or outside in the courtyard, and we would wave our palm branches like the crowd did that day, and we too would say, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then, just five days later, we embody that crowd again on Good Friday, except then we are shouting with the crowd, crucify him, crucify him. We are the crowd, the crowd that is so quick to jump with joy, but just as quickly to shame and to ridicule. I know how quick we are these days to praise. We are eager to praise those who work every day to make this situation we're all in better. But I also know that we are quick to complain about those people who are acting ridiculously, and there are plenty of them to complain about. But we are in this together. For better or worse, we are the crowd. We are the people who buy groceries and deliver groceries for parents, neighbors, and strangers alike. We are the people who buy more than we need out of a fear of not having enough and distrust that our political leaders will really have our back when the crisis escalates. We are the people who spend our newly discovered time at home sewing masks so they are more available to more people. We are the people who spend way too much of our newly found free time on social media sharing words of hate for anyone we disagree with. We are the crowd. The Palm Sunday crowd and the Good Friday crowd the Hosanna crowd, and the Crucify Him crowd. And what's hard is that that potential lives in each one of us every day, in every situation. And who knows which one will come out in any given moment. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems to me as though emotions are just so much closer to the surface these days. We're all so tense and anxious that in any moment we can burst out with frustration or with 
sometimes joy. Maybe it's based on how much sleep we get. <laughs> From what I understand, a lot of people have plenty of difficulty sleeping well these days. But why can we not break free from our selfishness, from our fear, from the sin that brings out the worst in us? Why can we not live the best version of that crowd every day? Especially right now, when the people that we hurt most are people we love most, the people we live with and near. Why do we have to be the crowd that is so fickle? You know who I really want to be in this story? I want to be Jesus. And not in a savior complex sort of way. I know that I can't save the thousands or hundreds of thousands of lives that they forecast will be taken by this virus. But I want, I want to be like Jesus in his calm directiveness. Jesus says, Jesus says in what we read this morning, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey. And there was a donkey. And he speaks his directions calmly, even though he knows, because he said it over and over again, that he knows he is walking to his death. He knows he is about to be killed. I want that kind of calm direction. I want to be able to say, this is how we're going to do this community thing right now. This is how we're going to do worship that is meaningful but doesn't endanger anyone. This is how we will make sure that all people have enough to eat. How we will stay home for the common good. How we will teach and inspire children who can't be in school in this time. And do all these things even though our lives are all turned upside down. I want to be humble like Jesus. The king who is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, the scripture says. I want to never have the urge to complain or blame, but simply serve, knowing that everyone, everyone is hurting. But the truth is, I am not Jesus. You are not Jesus. And yet, at the very same time, I am Jesus, and you are Jesus. I am. I am not, and you are not, Jesus, in that we're not perfect. We're not free from sin. We are not always able in every moment to do the right thing for the right reason. Sometimes we're just too frustrated, or tired, or confused. But I am Jesus, and you are Jesus. We are the body of Christ, embodying the love of God in this world imperfectly, but beautifully. You do not have to be perfect. It's okay to be human and to show your imperfections. That might even help with the whole humility thing. It's okay to get frustrated and to cry and to ask for help. But you also have beautiful opportunities in these days to be Jesus. Most obviously, of course, are the healthcare workers and those working in nursing homes and homeless shelters who are most obviously serving as Jesus in this crisis. But you can also be Jesus by staying at home and calling on friends and family and neighbors and fellow church members just to check in. You can be Christ by sewing those masks or by sharing words of hope and wisdom. You can be the light of the world. So yes, wave your palm branches or your greens, whatever you can find, with that crowd. Live into the cheering on hopeful version of the crowd. 
Lean out your window at 7 p.m. every night, as so many in the world are doing today, and applaud the healthcare workers. But in the quiet moments, simply look for small ways to bear Christ, humble and suffering, to a world that needs some hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing this next song, I invite you to make your offering, whether that is by using the link that's in the comments on, for the donate page, which is securely through PayPal, or if it means sending in your offering, which we pick up each week, to 4301 Rasp Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21206. Or filling out that service interest form that you might have ways to serve now and when all this passes. We invite you to contemplate how you can give, how you can be Jesus, as we sing, Blessed Be Your Name. with us, 
as we remember his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Hold us in his glory as we make our way through stressful times. Remind us of our spiritual healing that awaits us on the last day. Empower your church to carry on through these days. Bless our bishops Elizabeth and William as they guide us in our ministries in the most unusual circumstances ever faced. God of mercy, we pray for the most vulnerable among us, especially for Harry and the residents of Avondale community, for Esther, Donna, Virginia, Donna, Joan, and all the other 8,000 people at Oakcrest, and for everyone in residence communities isolated from family and friends. So too, we remember those who cannot attend to final goodbyes, visitations, or funerals as they lose loved ones. and deacons as they continue to minister to your people under such difficult restrictions. Bless our worship together so that it might uplift all who are listening. God of mercy, we ask your mercy on all those who are on our parish prayer list and those who we now name with voice or through our typing in comments or through the silence of our hearts. God of mercy by your word, you are made, we are made and saved. We remember all who have been called home to the saints at rest. Esther, Holger, Bill, Denise, Robert, Bill, and Audrey. Bring us with them into your everlasting kingdom. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to your care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. opportunity to be community even while we're, we are each in our own homes. Uh, you are invited to be community by making phone calls and by reaching out and by praying, <laughs> praying for everyone in the situation. I, I also have a suggestion that you might, uh, that you might consider calling um, members of this church or other people that you know who you think might benefit from hearing this service but don't have internet um, in their home. Then you might call them and, and invite them to listen in over the phone, um, particularly with Holy Week, that on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, they and on Easter, they would still have a way to participate in the service and to hear um, this familiar story and these words of um, sacrifice and of thanksgiving and of joy. Um, I invite you to, to take an opportunity to be able to share that witness with others. And now, a blessing. Go forth now in peace. Be of good courage. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Work for justice. Love and serve the Lord. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing together. And if you haven't gotten up in a while, go ahead and get up and dance with us as we sing.
Thanks be to God.